All right, let's go ahead and jump back into another one of these part one of seven test prep videos. Here we're going to be talking about METARs, specifically slightly harder METAR problems than the ones in the last video. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't. We're going to be doing two practice problems um, and you can go ahead and pause before I go over them and then you can see how I solve them. So let's go ahead and jump in. So this one says to refer to figure 12, which I have down below here. Um, and it asks for the wind direction and velocity at KJFK is from and we're going to ignore those answers. So we want to find we want to find which METAR corresponds with that. So we're going to go down the line and see if we can find an airport code that matches up with that. So it looks like we're looking at this one here. Um, and specifically, we want to look at the wind direction. So I can pick it out really easily because I know that it ends with that KT the wind direction and velocity, the wind conditions in a METAR will always end with that KT, which stands for knots. So um, that's just a really easy way for me to pick out where the wind conditions are being reported. <clears throat> you could just like go through this line by line or uh, section by section. So like this is a special METAR. This is the airport code. This is the time and date it was reported at. And then the next one is the weather. But I find that the more you look at these METARs, the more easily you are able to pick up which section corresponds to what so that you don't have to go through it manually. But anyway, so our wind direction and velocity is represented by this, by these characters. Remember the first three digits have to do with the direction the wind is coming from. So in this case, it's coming from 180 degrees. Then the next two corresponds with the wind speed. So we have four knots. And occasionally, if your wind is gusting, you'll see a G. And in that case, the number that follows the G is is the speed at which the gusts are at. So this would be 18 knots, for example. Um, since we don't have that G in here, we don't have gusts. That is our wind direction and velocity. Now, something else that you need to know about these METARs is whether they report true or magnetic directions um, and sort of talk about what the difference between those two are. So when you typically think of north, you think of directly straight up, right? So north, this is east, here's south, and then here's west. So this is what, we're, what we refer to as true, true north. Our magnetic north is slightly different than this. The reason has to do with the Earth's magnetic fields. So the magnetic north is the direction in which compasses point, okay? So um, these compasses are influenced by these magnetic fields that the Earth has. So they aren't always pointing directly in the direction of true north. And so like the difference between the magnetic north and true north is something called the magnetic declination. And so like the closer you get to the north pole, the worse the magnetic declination is. So that's just something you should know, um, true north and magnetic north for part 107. And something else you should just know for METAR, something you have to memorize, kind of a bummer, um, is that METARs represent the wind direction in the true direction, not the magnetic direction. Okay, so we have everything we need 80, 180 degrees true. So now we have everything that we need to find the right answer for this problem. So let's go down the line. 180 true at four knots. Well, that looks like it checks off all three of the, of the wind conditions that we got from this METAR. So that's the right answer. Let's go ahead and see why these other two answers are incorrect. So it's not 180 magnetic at four knots, um, as I just mentioned. METARs represent the wind direction in the true direction, not the magnetic direction. So this is incorrect, even though the wind velocity is correct. And then C is incorrect. It has the wrong uh, direction. It has the wrong velocity. Everything's wrong about this. Get rid of C. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our second problem. Here, we're looking at that same figure, figure 12, um, and it's asking which of the reporting stations have VFR weather. And then feel free to pause it if you want, and then we'll go over it. In this problem, VFR stands for visual flight rules. This basically means if someone is flying a plane, are they able to just rely on their eyes to fly the plane? Like, is the visibility and the cloud ceiling large enough such that they don't need to rely on their instruments, which is the sort of the alternative to visual flight rules, which is instrument flight 
rules in that the visibility or the cloud ceiling is so low that you have to rely on your plane's instruments to get you to where you're trying to go. Okay, so we're trying to figure out which of these have visual flight rules. So what are these minimum requirements such that we can use visual flight rules? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, if we scroll down, someone on the internet made this really handy dandy uh, diagram where the minimum or the marginal requirements is that the ceiling is a thousand to three thousand feet and the visibility is three to five statute miles or let's just say three plus because basically all of this is what we're looking for is the airport going to be able to use vfr so what we're basically looking for is a cloud ceiling of a thousand feet or higher and is the visibility three statute miles or higher okay so let's go ahead and see which of these which of these have those. So if we're looking at this first one, we can skip all of this information until we get to the SM, that stands for statute miles. So this airport has a visibility of 15 statute miles, which is great. And then for our sky cover, we have SKC, which is uh, clear. So we have clear, we don't actually even have a cloud ceiling here. So by that, you can just assume that there aren't that many clouds out in the sky. It looks like KINK is good. They would have VFR weather. Moving on to the next one, we have 30 statute miles of visibility, also very good. And then we have, we have scattered clouds and the ceiling is, you might want to say that this is 150 feet, but remember you need to append Two zero. So the ceiling is at 15,000 feet. 15,000 feet is greater than 1,000 feet. So this one can use visual flight lines as well. So we're good here. Moving on to the next one. We have six statute miles of visibility. So that's great. And then let's take a look at our sky cover. So we have scattered clouds. So scattered, S-C-T, scattered. Scattered clouds at 700 feet. And then we have scattered clouds again at 25,000 feet. So you might be tempted to say this wouldn't follow VFR rules, but the thing is, there is no cloud ceiling for these contractions. So if it's clear, few are scattered, we don't actually have what's called a ceiling. So these cloud types do not count as ceilings. Do not count as ceilings only broken and overcast clouds and also something called VV or vertical visibility will count as having ceilings. So for example, uh, vertical visibility, this is kind of a tangent, but this means that you're not even able to identify a ceiling. Um, so for example, let's say that there's like smoke or really hard snow or fog or something, this plane will have really bad visibility and you cannot really determine where the ceiling is. So you, you kind of, from the ground up, you try to see how far you can see into this poor weather. So these will count as ceilings. Those numbers that follow these three contractions will have ceilings. So since we're having scattered here, that doesn't count as having a ceiling. So we're still good here. This one works as well. Let's move on to the next one. So here we have one and a half statute miles. Unfortunately, this is not greater than the three minimum that we needed. So I would say that this does not have VFR weather. We could look at the cloud coverage. Let's go ahead and do it. It's kind of, um, we need both of these conditions to be true, but let's go ahead and just look at it. So we have 700 feet, but it's 700 feet overcast so that would be our ceiling so that so not only does it not pass for visibility it doesn't pass for the cloud ceiling either all right let's go ahead and look at our last airport so here oh man we only have half a mile half a statute mile of visibility so this is going to go ahead and not pass for vfr and then if we take a look at our cloud ceiling once again we have overcast starting at 500 feet since overcast is one of those contractions that does count as a ceiling, once again, we have not met that 1000 requirement, so we do not have VFR at this airport either. So it looks like the three airports that do have VFR are KINK, KBOY, 
and KLAX. So is there an answer that matches that? It looks like C is the correct answer. A is incorrect because we've determined that these two airports at the bottom do not have VFR weather. B is incorrect because we determined that JFK does not have VFR weather. So this is incorrect. So the correct answer here is C. Hopefully that helps with these sort of harder METAR problems. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.